Palaroga Shark Media. Hi and welcome to Palace Intrigue. I am your host, Mark Francis. The privacy-minded and environmentally conscious Harry and Meghan made an unexpected appearance at the premiere of Bob Marley, One Love in Jamaica, on Tuesday. The couple graced the red carpet hand-in-hand with Meghan dressed in black attire, while Harry opted for a suit without a tie for the event held at the Carib Theatre in Kingston. In the Daily Mail, Sarah Vine writes under the headline, Harry and Meghan are casting themselves as refugees from a repressive regime. The king should give them what they claim to want and set them free by stripping them of their royal titles. Vine writes, When I saw the pictures of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex at the premiere of the Bob Marley movie in Kingston, the first thing that sprang to mind was how thoroughly refreshed they both looked. Indeed, I had to do a double take to make sure it really was the Duchess that Prince Harry was escorting and not some dewy doe I had look alike. The Prince, meanwhile, looked remarkably unfurrowed for a man who looks likely to have paid three quarters of a million pounds in legal costs accrued by his failed libel action against the Mail on Sunday. I don't know what they put in the water out there in Montecito, but it's definitely working. Still, all that gloss doesn't hide the ugly fact that the pair, normally so vocal when it comes to informing the world of their heartfelt sentiments, have yet to say a single word in public on the subject of Harry's father, the king, and his health issues. That they should have chosen this particular occasion to break cover is also intriguing. Jamaica is not exactly a friend of the British monarchy. Indeed, the country's Prime Minister, Andrew Holness, who joined the Sussexes at the premiere with his wife, Juliet, has expressed his hope that the people will cut ties with Britain when they vote in a referendum on the question later this year. By choosing to break cover in such vehemently anti-monarchist company, the Duke and Duchess appear to be sending a very clear signal to the palace. It appears to me that they intend to use their royal connection to undermine both the individual reputations of members of the royal family and that of the institution as a whole. I hope that I am wrong. Royal expert Phil Dampier wrote in the Daily Mail, Under normal circumstances, there would be nothing wrong with them, the Sussexes, going to a film premiere, but at a time when his father is going under the knife and Jamaica is making noises about ditching the monarchy, this is rather insensitive. Harry has happy memories of Jamaica. We remember him winning a dash against Usain Bolt, and clearly the couple felt at home. But it's sending out a message that they support that country when they haven't found the time to make a public show of support for the King and Princess of Wales. They may have done so in private, but they are certainly not going out of their way to say they want a reconciliation, and this appearance emphasises yet again the different world they now live in. When it came to jewellery, Meghan wore a pair of gold earrings, and it seemed that the mystery surrounding her missing engagement ring may have been solved, as it appeared to be back on the ring finger of her left hand. For a significant part of the previous year, Meghan was frequently seen without her engagement ring, which features two diamonds from Princess Diana's collection and one from Botswana. The ring's absence had puzzled fans, and there were speculations that it was being repaired. However, pictures from the film premiere, including one shared on Twitter by Jamaica's Minister of Legal and Constitutional Affairs, seemed to show Meghan wearing a diamond ring on her wedding finger once again. Palace Intrigue will be right back. Prince Edward got to meet Jonathan, a 192-year-old tortoise, during his official visit to the tropical British overseas territory of St. Helena. The Duke of Edinburgh posed for photos with the remarkable tortoise at Plantation House, the official residence of the Governor of St. Helena. Edward is the latest member of the royal family to meet Jonathan, following in the footsteps of his late parents, Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip, his grandparents, King George VI and Queen Mother, and his late aunt, Princess Margaret. Queen Elizabeth first encountered the tortoise in 1947, accompanied by her sister and parents. In 1957, Prince Philip was photographed meeting Jonathan when the tortoise was 126 years old. Jonathan, the Seychelles giant tortoise, holds the distinction of being the world's oldest living land animal. With an estimated birth year of 1832, he was gifted to St. Helena from the Seychelles around 1882, and he has exceeded the average life expectancy of his species by more than 40 years. Edward made an unusual comment during his trip to South Africa, saying, If I can be quite frank, men aren't doing a very good job at the moment, so therefore I am not particularly happy about standing up here and speaking as a man. But I will say there is more that binds us together, more that brings us together than separates us. It is understood that Prince Edward's comments were a response to speeches made by others that addressed various global conflicts. A source explained, His Royal Highness was reflecting on the need to build bridges and not allow conflict to drive communities apart. 
And there you have it. If you'd like to email us, our address is thepalacentric at gmail.com. Please follow us on Spotify, Apple, or your app of choice. And if you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. I'm Mark Francis. My thanks to John McDermott. This is Palace Intrigue and good times. Mm-hmm.